MP to all cars. Armed robbery on security vehicle Julian now. Four to MP. All men. Off watch. Zero one to MP. Disturbance in High Street. Gang of youths MP fighting with knives. One one. Request assistance. Over. Suspects on. Is Sergeant Brooken? Uh, he's downstairs with Tully questioning Lockett, sir. Making any progress? Not much. Lockett's holding out for mistaken identity, injustice, all that lot. Won't admit the gun. That's it, sir. Admits he was there, but that he didn't do it. Did he? Well, when Davy's free, I want to see him. And you. A real job about guns. Later today. Yes, sir. Come on, Lockett. How long do we have to wait? You've had my answer. I don't carry a gun. Who does this belong to, then? I've never seen it before, and don't point it at me. It might go off. It isn't loaded now. I wouldn't know, would I? Look, Lockett, don't waste my time. You've been here since yesterday. You asked for an identity parade, you got one. Six witnesses picked you out. They picked me out as being near the post office, that's all. OK, I admit I was in the street, but there were lots of people in the street. Come off it, you were watching it, waiting until it was quiet. The bloke who went in was wearing a balaclava. Your witnesses said so. Did anyone see me wearing one? Tully, tell him again. As he went into the shop, the thief was seen to pull on a balaclava. He was seen by both the postmaster and his assistant. But they didn't see his face. They saw him lock the door and pull out a gun. Where would I get a gun? He pulled out a gun and said, if you waste time, you'll get this, and fired a shot into the ceiling. Cobblers. Remind him what happened next, Tully. The man then produced an airway zipper bag and told the postmaster to empty the safe and the till. The postmaster and his assistant have both identified you as being the size, shape and weight of the man who wore the balaclava. There are plenty of blokes the same size as me. Who's denying it? I'm saying it wasn't me. He just grabbed the first bloke who fitted the description. Tell him the rest, Tully. But he knows the rest, sir. Just tell him. As the thief left the shop, he pulled off the hood and stuffed it and the gun into the zipper bag. He was seen by our third witness, who was about to enter the shop. She saw his face, saw the gun, screamed, and the raider ran off. OK, he ran off. About 30 yards from the shop locket, there's a lane leading to Market Street. He ran into the lane and was seen by our next witness. She saw him throw the bag away and run into Market Street. But she lost sight of him. The two men chasing him didn't know, did they? They caught up with him in Market Street and grabbed him. No, they grabbed me. It was a mistake. With your past record, it was a mistake. Watch it, Sergeant. Next time you question me, I want a lawyer here to make a note of all this. Make a note of what? You're not listening. For the tenth time, I was in Market Street. I don't deny it. Minding my own business. I saw these two men come running out of the lane chasing someone. He went into the crowd. They were too flaked to go any further, so they grabbed the first bloke who looked like him. And that's your story? It's the truth. So's our version. And six witnesses picked you out, including the woman who saw you throw the bag away. She didn't hesitate, did she, Tully? No. And in the lane we found the airways bag containing the £8,000 from the post office, a black balaclava and a pistol, loaded and one shot had been fired. There's no way you're going to fit me up. No one's fitting you up, Lockett. Well, next time we talk, I want a brief here. Next time we talk, I'll have a witness who saw you run out of that lane. And we'll have you. <laughs> you tried to find a witness, but didn't have any luck, did you? Ask you, mate. Go on. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Sarge. We tried. See, he admits it. It's what I've been telling you all along, isn't it? So can I go back now? Yeah, but I haven't finished with you yet. Get a PC and take him to the jailer, Tully. All right, Sarge. Come on. Getting nowhere fast, aren't we? We'll keep at him. Get there in the end. Yeah. Do you fancy a cuppa? I'd rather have a pint. Have we got time? We'll make time. We deserve it. Hey, Jim, we'll be in the Falcon. Uh, just a minute, Dave. Yeah? Just to say, Mr Roach wants a word with you. He wants to see us both, but he's out at the moment. Oh, good. I can have that beer. No, I'll come and get you out when he's back. Right. Pint? Yeah, thanks, Sarge. Two pints, please, love. Two pints, coming up. Now, listen, before Jim comes in, a word in your ear, Tully. Something I don't want to happen again, ever. What's that, Sarge? What you said in front of Lockett, that we couldn't find a witness who saw him run out of that lane. But he knows, Sarge. He was sitting in the squad car while Lloyd and I were trying to find one. Tully, look, it doesn't matter what he knows, just don't admit to him what we know or don't know. He'll use it against us and leave us with egg on our face. Two pints. Oh, thanks. Oh, cheers, love. Thank you. Right, come on, let's find the table. I'm sorry, Sarge. Well, <clears throat> just don't forget. Yeah. Mm. I reckon he's worried about that gun. He's worried about the whole thing, ain't he? He messed it up. And if we're not going to do the same, we must find another witness. Shall I go back to Market Street? Right, but have your pint first. Oh, here comes Sergeant Harrison. Oh, yeah. Is the governor back? Yeah, but don't hurry. He doesn't want us till four o'clock, but he does have a job for Tully. Well, Tully's got one already in Market Street. Uh, this one's on the way. Special for Mr Roach. A bit of public relations to put us in good with the council. <clears throat> like what? You know that new house in sight, near Market Street? Yeah, I know. The one that's been cleared for two years. Except for one house, held up by scaffolding. Yeah, right. And one old man holding out inside. Yeah, Mr Latimer. 
Oh, him. Yeah, he's not a bad old boy. I've talked to him once or twice. Who hasn't? <laughs> the council, social services, medical officers. Right stubborn old geezer. Yeah. But his time is up. This afternoon the house comes down. They're going to start building, remove him forcibly. What can I do? To help Mr Roach. He thinks a young copper might get on with him better, talk some sense into him. No one wants to see him get hurt. Yeah, OK. Um, when you've had a chat, report back and tell the old man what happened. Mr Roach wants to know why he's holding out so long. Yeah, we'll do. Well, don't just sit there, Tully. Get on with it. But I'm finishing my beer. Go, Tully. Yes, sir. Which... See you later. Yeah. Can I see another one, Dave? Yeah, Tom. Now, what does Roach want us for? I don't know much, except it's about guns. I've got enough to be going on with Lockett. <laughs> it's in a bigger league than Lockett. Is it? Yeah, we'll know at four o'clock. Off or a pint? Pint, thanks, Jim. Mr Latimer? Mr Latimer? Go away! Mr Latimer? Push off! I'd like a word with you, if that's all right. I want to help you. Everybody wants to help me. Just go away! My name's Tully. Jack Tully. We met a couple of times before. Last time I cleared those kids away from your house when they were bothering you. Remember? Yeah, I remember you. You're a copper. That's right. You come to arrest me? I just want to talk. I've brought you some food, sandwiches. You alone? Yeah. You sure? Of course I am. Come on, trust me. Just a minute. All on my own. See? Yeah. Come here to the kitchen. It's warm. This way. Come on in. You've got a fire burning. Yeah. With all the rubbish around here, it's the one thing I can keep going. Gives off a nice heat. My wife always liked a good fire. It was always a warm place when she was here. Not like it is now. Here's your sandwiches, Sam. It is Sam, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose you think I'm running out of food, eh? Well, I'm not. I've got friends. They keep me supplied. I can keep going. They're closing in on you, Sam. I'm staying. No one's going to move me from here. You know they're knocking it down today, Sam. Oh, no. They've said that before, and I'm still here, aren't I? Every month they tell me, but they won't. They've moved all your neighbours. Knocked their houses down. But not mine. They can't. I own it. They can't touch it. Only one left in the street. You want some tea? I'm just brewing up. Uh, no thanks. They haven't cut the water off, then. No. Health people wouldn't let them. I can boil it on the fire. Got no gas or electric, but I can survive as long as I've got a fire. Why are you doing this, Sam? Hey? It's noisy, dirty, and they've offered you everything. Yeah. New house, garden. Well, he even offered you ten times what this place is worth. Well, it isn't the money. But well, what then? God, everybody's asked me that. Council, MPs, Fleet Street, I've told them. It's been in the papers. Yeah, I know. Your dad owned the house and you were born and brought up here. Yeah, it was a good street in them days. You married and brought your wife here, didn't you? Yeah, Doris. In the war, that was. I was going away. She waited for me here, through the blitz and all. I was waiting here when I got back. We was happy in those days. And that's why, lad. It's the past, Sam. And Doris isn't the past. Everything was good till she died. Died right here. I'm going to end my days here as well. Then they can have it. But they're taking it today, Sam. No! And they can't scare me. When was it, Sam? What? That Doris died. How long ago? Oh, a long time, I think. Well, I get mixed up. <laughs> Three? No, no, five years. That's right, five years ago, come Christmas. Can't go before then. The kettle's boiling, sir. I'll take it off with you, I don't want that tea. Look, I'll tell you what. Let's go round to that pub. The bell, isn't it? Yeah. Round the corner? What's the time? Yeah, it'll still be open. Come on, I'll buy you a pint. Well, I don't know. How about it, eh? What? Yeah, no. Oh, you're talking like them now. Is that why you came to get me out? Then they move in, is that no, it? No, Sam, no. But I'm sorry. It was just a thought, that's all. <laughs> Look, I'd better be on my way. You're leaving? Yeah, I've things to do. 
Well, then you can tell them Sam Latimer is staying, not moving. They come in over my dead body. Sam, you're not thinking of... Ah, uh, <laughs> Me? Do myself in? Never. Well, I've warned you, Sam. You know what's happening this afternoon. I can take care of myself, lad. Right. Well, I'll be off then. Yeah, before you go, one thing you can do for me. I wouldn't mind a beer after all. Will you take this jug? Get me a pint at the bell, best bitter, and hand it in to me. <laughs> of course I will. And you can have it on me, all right? Oh, thanks, lad. For a copper, you're not so bad. Cheers, Sam. You been to Market Street? Yes, Sarge. Any luck? Well, no, all they remember is him being nabbed. And they say he was walking towards the lane when the two men jumped him. So? Well, that's what Lockett says. He had a gun, Tully. He fired it. He can't get away with it. Yeah. No, Sarge. Uh, can I see Mr Roach now? Yeah. Come in, Tully. Uh, I've seen the old man, sir. Latimer, yeah. How was he? Oh, OK. What did he have to say? Well, the same old stuff. Doesn't want to leave. It's his house. Lived all his life there. His wife died there, so he won't move. What did you say about his wife? She died there, sir. He told you that? Yes, sir. Anything wrong? When did this happen? Five years ago, he said. Five years ago this Christmas. You're sure? Well, yes. Why, sir? Tully, five years ago this Christmas, Latimer came here to report his wife missing. We investigated. There was no trace of her. Neighbours reported hearing rows in the house. He said she had walked out on him. Well, we believed him. Well, that's the story he's been giving to the papers. And to the council. He's waiting for her to come back. If they moved him, she wouldn't find him. But now he's telling you that she died there. Well, he's old, sir. He was wondering. Maybe he's just forgotten. Or maybe he was remembering. Well, perhaps she did come back, sir, and died there later. You're sure he said five years this Christmas? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Tully. I think I'll check the records. Chief Inspector Roach. Hey, all righty. We just hold the line a minute. Right, uh, leave it with me, Tully. Uh, close the doors again. Yes, sir. You look as though you've lost something, Tully. Uh, yeah, my sergeant. Oh, he's gone out. Said he'll phone if he needs you. Hello, Tommy. Oh, hello, Mr. Brook. Still standing outside bedding shops? You ought to get a proper job. <laughs> you must be joking. What can I do for you? Well, you heard about that post office job on Thursday. When Lockett got nicked? Yeah. Do you see it? Nah. Citizen's arrest, weren't it? Two blokes got him. Yeah, but we need more witnesses to make a positive identification. Anyone who saw him running into Margaret Street. OK, I'll ask around. But I've got somebody that can do us both a bit of good. What? Rings. You what? Rings. In Addison Street. Ain't you heard? No. Well, nice little job. Heard about it on my way here. Yeah? Yeah. This bloke had a bird going to the big jewellers there. Asked to see the engagement rings. Well, the case is open. Then the bloke slugs the assistant. Both grab the trays and run into a car and off. When? Well, just about an hour ago. Expensive rings, Mr. Brook. Bound to be an insurance job. Good reward. Are you making a claim? Well, I could do it a few quid. Help with the ponies. <laughs> One of my pals saw it. Got a good look at the bloke. If you were quick, you could nick him while he's still gone. All right, if we do, you're on for the claim. Let's have it. His name's Carey. Les Carey. Lives in Hill Street with the bird. Do you know the number? No, but uh, you know the pub? Yeah. Well, then there's a betting shop, then a newsagent. Well, they live above the newsagents. Thanks, Tommy. Oh, uh, Mr. Brook? Yeah? If he isn't there, his fence is Larry Goodman. CID, DC Tully. Sergeant Brook here. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Listen, Jack, ask Jim Harrison if he knows anything about a ring job. It's just happened. Addison Street, the jewellers. Then get a car and meet me in Hill Street, round the corner. Right. Sergeant Harrison? Yes, Tully. Uh, that was Sergeant Brooke. He says, do you know about a ring job in Addison Street? Yeah. yeah. It's just come in. Why? Does he have something? Yeah, he wants to know the strength. OK, well, tell him the jeweller says they got away with 12 trays of rings. Claims they're worth £100,000. Thanks, Sarge. Let me know how it goes. That's the news agents, Tully. See? And they're above the shop? Yeah. So far, all quiet. I had a talk with the news agent. He saw him come back half an hour ago which fits with the time of the grab. Now, how do we get him? Well, you've got an honest face, Tully. What, me? More honest than mine. Go and knock on his door. His name's Carey. What shall I say? You've got a message from Mr. Rowlands. He's the newsagent. Get him to open the door. 
Sergeant Harrison said he nicked 12 trays. What? 12 trays of rings. Let's hope he's still got them. Right, now give me a signal when your foot's in the door. Who is it? I've got a message for you, Mr Carey. I said, who is it? It's from Mr Rowlands and the news agents. Well, I'm not dressed. I'll get it later. Oh, look, mate, I'm doing you a favour. Do I have to stand here all day? Oh, all right. Wait a minute. <coughs> Police, Mr Carey! What? I'm in charge! Right. What is all this about? Oh, leave off, will you? It is, Arch. Hey, have you got a warrant? This place is private. Yeah, yeah, we know. Well, what right have you got to break in and push me around? Be quiet, Mr Carey. You. Tully, you found anything? There's a girl hiding in here. Bring her here. She wasn't hiding, Sergeant. She was dressing. Well, you don't look as though you just got out of bed. What's your name? Nichols. First name? Sandra. I found two of the trays, Sergeant. Empty. We'll find the others. What is all this, Sergeant? Jewellers trays, Carey. Two hours ago, a young couple got out of a car in Addison Street, went into a jeweller's, snatched some ring trays. You were recognised on the pavement. Oh, yeah, OK, but it's nothing to do with Sandra, is it, love? See, I talk with her because we're getting engaged, aren't we? Yeah. Got a comedian, have we? Any luck, Tully? Yeah, I found the rest. Twelve of them, but no rings. Where are they, Carey? If they're not in the trays, then I haven't got them. Have you, Sandra? No. Sarge, these trays would hold anything up to 300 rings. I want them, Carey. Where are they? Your friend's Nick, Sandra, and so are you. Don't make it any harder. Let's have an answer. <sighs> Tell him, Les. You'll have to tell him. I've told him already, love. I haven't got them. Please, Les. Well, who's going to tell me, then? Neither of you? All right, we'll go down the station. OK. I'll show you. Sandra! No! I don't want any more trouble, Les. Tully, go with her. Right, come on. Are you going to change your story now? Silly bitch. You'd never have found them. Going to keep them for when you came out, are you? Oh, yeah. I've got them, Sarge. They're in this bag. Oh, thank you, Sandra. I'll pack it in, Les. Let's have a look. Oh, nice. And still with their price tags on. Yeah, high prices too. Some of them worth 500 quid. Yep. OK, Kerry, you're booked. And you, Sandra. Looks like you're going to have to cancel your wedding plans for a few years. Ah, uh -huh. very funny. Ah, there you are, Tommy. Oh, hello, Mr Brook. Have any luck? With Kerry, yeah. Like you said, he had them. We reckon £90,000 worth. And I'm on 10%? I can retire. I'll put you down for it. Great! but only if you come up with an answer to the other job. You're an hard man, Mr Brook. That's the secret of my success. Yeah. Well, I have got something for you. The lady who runs that second-hand clothes shop, she saw him. She was outside the shop, saw it all. Huh? She saw this bloke running up the lane, noticed him because two men were chasing him, saw him come into her street, and then he got nabbed. Is she a reliable witness? Oh, honest as they come, Mr Brook. Go and see her. I'll do that. And thanks, Tommy. Hey, don't forget the other, will you? I'd like to be rich. No, Tommy, I won't forget. Hello, Jim. How's things? OK. You're looking cheerful. Things go well. We recovered the rings. We have the two involved downstairs. Oh, good. By the way, Mr Roach wants a word. All oh, right. Yeah? You want to be, sir? Oh, yes, Dave. Here's the job for tonight. Yes, sir? Two officers are coming down from Yorkshire to pick up a wanted man. He's dangerous. And they want some backup. Will we be armed, sir? Yeah. Could be quite a party. Cars, loud hailers, marksmen on the roost, you name it. Are you free now? Yes, sir. Oh, there's one thing, sir. I'd like to put an informant in for an insurance handout. We did a good recovery on those rings. Oh, right. And uh, Lockett? Well, Lockett's going to need a lawyer. We found a new witness, sir. It's all sewn up. Right. Well, then we can have the briefing now. Get Jim, Tully and Lloyd. Right. Tully, let's have you. Hello, Jim, will you bring in Lloyd? Right. Right, uh, just shut that. Right, now gather round. Now, the briefing for tonight. <coughs> Now, at 23.30, we're meeting some colleagues from the north. There will be Chief Inspector Williams and Sergeant Mercer. On our side, there'll be the five of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, the task. Now, they've come down to take a lad who's done murder in their region. He thinks he can shoot his way out of trouble. Now, in their opinion, another killing won't bother him much. They know him. They think it best that they come down for him. What's his name, sir? Richards. He was a corporal in the army. Now, according to the warrant, six months ago, he shot his mistress then tried to burn down the house. Failed, ran off. They traced him to Leeds, where he shot and wounded two constables. Then he was lost for three months. He's now been traced to London and Arpatch, a terrace house in Highthorn Road, number 18, where he's living with a girl. Now, we're expected to do the house. Sneak up on him, surprise him. We meet at 23.30. Move in after midnight.
It's Roach, isn't it? Yes. I'm Williams, Bill Williams. How's it going? Oh, the house is all quiet. The flat's on the top floor. His girl went in about an hour ago. Mm. The light's still on, see? Aye. Uh, let's go back to the car, have a talk. Right. Where are your lot? Waiting. Ready to be called. Uh, the yard's laid on two marksmen at the front and one on the roof. In case there's a shootout, there's an ambulance standing by. Cars with spotlights and loud hailers will move into place once we're in the house. Do you want us to go in by the front? Yes, it shouldn't be any trouble. The lady on the ground floor is helping us. My sergeant's with her now, waiting for us. And the roof? They'll get up there through number 16. So, it's all laid on? Yes, except for the difficult bit. Getting him to surrender, talking him down. That's left to us. Uh, what's the time? Call it to 12. Right. Alert your lads. Get him to the front door. Not quietly. Sergeant Mercer will let you in. Right. Sergeant Brooke. Yeah, come in. This way. We wait here. This is DC Tully. Sergeant. Hello. What about the others? Mr Roach and Sergeant Harris are on their way. And DC Lloyd is one of yours, isn't he? Yes, he's going on the roof through number 16 with one of yours. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, what's the layout? There's this floor, mm -hmm. second floor, top floor. They're on the top. Yeah. Two rooms, but only one door going onto the landing. This could be your boss. In here, sir. Name's Mercer. Hello, Mercer. This is Sergeant Harris. Hello. Right, are we all ready? Leaves just Mr. Williams, sir. Then we're ready. He's on his way. Are you on, sir? Yeah. I've drawn one for you, Dave. Here are. Oh, you, sir. Right, while we wait, Tully, sir, I've uh, I've got some news for you. Just uh, just come over here, sir. Nice going on, man. It's about your friend, Mr. Latimer. His wife didn't go missing, as he first said, and she did die there. Seems the neighbours were right. They must have had a row, he knocked her about, killed her, and then buried the body under the floorboards. They found the bones when they knocked the house down. And what happens to him, sir? Well, he had his wish. He didn't leave. He was found dead in an armchair. He took some pills and a glass of beer. I bought him that beer and I gave it to him. Yeah, well, he must have known it was all up. Yes, sir. It was the only way out. Mm. Right, here comes Williams. All right, Roach. Your lad's ready. Yes, I'm ready, Bill. Uh, it's midnight. The car should be moving into position. The operation's called Norseman. Let's check in on the radio. Norseman to Norseman 1. We're in position. Understood. Yeah, go ahead now. Roger and out. Right, uh, one sergeant on the first landing, Tom. Yes, sir. A sergeant on the next landing. Jim. Yes, sir. Right, Brooke and Tully, follow me and Inspector Roach. Let's go. Quiet now. This is the door. Keep back from it. Right. Guns ready. First move, we talk to him. <laughs> Who's that? Richards, it's the police. Open the door, will you? We just want to talk. Light's gone off now. Keep back from the door. Richards, it's Inspector Williams. Are you ready to come out? We want to talk. Well, that's your answer, isn't it? Richards! You keep away! You get another! Put down your gun, Richards! There's no way out! Norseman to Norseman 1. Did you hear the shooting? Yes, we heard it. Can you distract him? Get him to the window. There's a spotlight on the window. Richard, you're surrounded. Come to the window. See for yourself. He's shooting at them in the street. Frankie, don't! Please don't! It's the girlfriend. Frankie! Are you all right in there? Yes, she's all right. Frankie, please Shut up, will you? <laughs> Richards, why don't you let her out? She hasn't done any harm. Let her go. Well, let her out now, then. Well, stand clear, then. If I see anyone, she gets it. Back, everyone. Right. All right, Richards, it's clear. Get out. Good riddance. <laughs> you OK? Yeah, yeah. I'll be all right. Right downstairs with you, out of the way. Harrison, look after her. Down here. I'll take care of you. Thank you, sir. And now? We go in. Right. Norseman to Norseman 1. Can you distract him again? Get him to the window. We'll try. Right. This is what we do. When the loud hailers distracted him, we break the door down and rush him. Richard, we have a message for you. Come to the window. We have a message. Is it the window? Right. 
Now. That's it. In. Take his gun, Dave. Right. How is he? Well, he's hit twice, sir. Unconscious. Mr. Williams hit in the leg. Bill, how is it? Oh, I'll be okay. Take over, will you? Yeah, sure. Inspector Rhodes to Norseman 1. We're in. Ambulance men, please, for Richards and Mr. Williams. How is Williams? They both need help. Tell them to hurry. Mercer. Yes, sir. Look after Inspector Williams. Yes, sir. You got three handguns, sir. All right, take charge of them, Tully. Yes, sir. All right. Well, that's it then. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this program.